tonight, my Lord. Good evening once again. Welcome to another Sunday evening worship here at Tabernacle. We hope you're going to have a blessed day. We come up by no impression reading from the Word of God. It is good for us to be here this evening. We're going to have something by Facebook. Again, we are located at Tabernacle Baptist Church. I think the pastor is by Pastor Switzerland. Assistant Pastor Ned Bernard came in to you. Welcome. 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 Let's all stand as we begin our evening service. Pay in the three times tomorrow. Must I go? 395. Must I go? An empty mouth.
Thank you, Lord, for caring for all the vessels in our lives. We ask these vessels in our name, Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.
the body of the Lord. All the glory from the people and the church.
Now, when these men began to Jesus, they knew the structure, and so uh, they have given a very kind of sense, and they one of them when they walk, they say, okay, I think someone will go there, someone will be sent to the end, the other one, let's go a little further to the right, the right, and then they say, no, okay, go just a little bit back, okay, you're right over where he is right now, you're right over there. That's where they break the roof up. And so I'm, I'm, I'm just assuming how we've done it, okay, the Bible doesn't say that, but it said they took up the, the, the tires off the roof, and they, they made that road big enough now. What I cannot grasp is why do these men have broken somebody on roof? Nobody recognizes it. They must say that the children watch the car go. Yo, I don't know who the men go, and maybe I don't want to sell that in a day. The, the, the day I didn't have internet and everything else, they stay on their cell phone or their iPad most of the time now. But I can remember when my children were they look, uh, look, uh, look for little kids. And on Saturdays, when they watch the cartoon, and they sit before that TV, and, and, and Bugs Bunny and Jackie Duck and and um, uh, the, the, the Flintstone and all these different cars are coming on and they will play there and you call one of them. Nobody hear you. You and then you got to call one, two, three, seven, then you got to scream. And then when you raise your voice, then they jump and say, you know, I said, yeah, the day could have heard that. So that's what you have to do about Because I can't see that boy, if someone goes up by you and start crying and talking, well, I get excited like we're right on the side to see what's going on. But somehow, they were able to break that roof up, make that roof big enough, and get this man to Jesus. Tonight, I want you to know that your walk with Jesus will never be all it can be until you get the pain for the way. I don't know what the is in your life. But whatever it is, you need to get it out of the way. In Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 1 to 6, says the word which came to Jeremiah from the, from, from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the forest house. And there I will cause thee to hear my word. Then I went down to the forest house, and behold, he wrought a work on the, on the wheel. And the vessels that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the poor. That man, he made a mistake with it. So he made it again. Another vessel, a shade good to the portal to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this portal? Said the Lord, behold, as the clay is in the portal's hand, so are ye in my hand, O house of Israel. Again, I don't remember which part of Israel we were, but we were driving through one of the regions. And again, I don't know about the Freddy you call this either. And then and we stopped at this little area where somebody was doing spinning the, 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 the clay on the wheel. And they were using their hand, but then I don't know, I, I I think, I don't know if it was a motorized electrical wheel or thing, but they had it on like a plate, and then they had their hand on the plate, and the thing spinning, and they flattening it, they shaking it. But then again, you look over on the side, you see a bunch of dry clay pieces. They would have been uh, clay ornaments that they would have been making and they didn't turn them the way they wanted to turn them. But once the clay dried, it made them all good. They throw that away, they get some fresh clay and they would make it all over again. But that's what it's all about. Jesus wants us to be in his hand. He wants to fashion our lives into that style, into that passion that can glorify him. Oh, I am thrilled when I think of heavenly, the heavenly court of Jesus Christ, how you can change your life. When you look back over your life, and you remember what you used to do. I mean, sometimes you want to think about that past life, but once in a while, there is nothing to go on with reminiscing. Nothing you're not reminiscing, because you miss it, you're thinking about, oh, what a glorious thing it is that he lifted me up out of the mind clay and set my foot up, I the man to walk the stay. When you remember what you used to do, and where you could have been, I told the gentleman uh, uh, yesterday, I said, sir, I said, God didn't save me, when he saved me, my bones would have now been white. And he said to me too, he said, he said, he said, but what side I believe I too. Because not, not that we were bad people, but we were sin sinful people. We were living in sin. You see. And, and not to 
our sin, our attitude, our actions, our affections, our, our cares, our failures, our foolishness, our sin, our shortcomings. These are the things that cause us to be hidden from the face of Jesus. Our sin is our stupidness.
God's face and as patient and for my name's sake had labored and has not fainted. He didn't give up. He said, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. There are some things that you used to do. Yes, you're still doing some good things. But there are some good things that you're not doing. Messiah says, Remember wherefore, commence thou art fallen, and repent, and do thy first work, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. If this thou hast, that thou hatest thee to commit with him, which I also did. Which is a good church. That we will. They hate some sin, but they were committing some sin. He that hath an ear, I'll let him hear what the Spirit said unto the church. To him that overcometh that I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Now there's some things you do that, yes, you pray, you read your Bible, you do everything right. I mean, you win souls. You come to church, but there's something lacking in your life. You know what it is. You deal with it every day.
be ashamed in his right position as a Savior, Lord, Master of God in your life. Your soul will long for him and your desire for him will be more than life itself. Nothing thrills the saints more than living your way to God. Then I enjoy that last song that I have. God bless him so that the Holy Spirit was there. Psalm 42, 1 to 2 said, and as the heart man after the water brook, so man my soul after thee, O God. That's the way it should be. My soul thirsted for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? The deer is from yonder in the wilderness. I was glad I came from along. That's the deer God. And then the show. The different seasons, they show when it ain't rain for six or seven months and how the water holds up prior and, and they find that the, 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 the crocodiles and the alligators will be in and, and, and the water hole would, would, would be for the thirst of the animals, water, like what they need, water to drink. And they will go there and that alligator, he got to eat. And so he is submerged under the water just enough for he can see them and they cannot see him. And their thirst drives them to their death. Sometimes when they go, that alligator jumps up and snaps them and he takes them under. And once he begins, that alligator spin, that's it. But you see, when the, when the thirst craves that refreshing drink, it will draw those animals there. I'll say we need to be like that deer who is uh, longing for, uh, for a frigid thirst from that cool of our refreshing spring. If we long for God like that and we go before Him, we will find no, no, no alligator going to get us when we go to the spring of God. We will find our thirst which refresh. Disciples, when you go to the masses, even after those two men going to a maze, it was on the day of the resurrection. Jesus Christ had died. Luke 2, 24. And Jesus Christ was resurrected. They were, these two men, no doubt, met Mary. The two ladies at the tomb, and the two ladies told them that when they got there, the tomb was empty. They were walking back home, about 20 to 40 miles, back to a maze. And as they walked, Jesus joined them. The reason why Jesus joined them is to be in their heart. They were talking about the resurrection. They said, Man, see, they didn't see Jesus, but they saw the empty tomb. They were not convinced that he was resurrected. They, and when Jesus joined them on the way, they were talking, they said, man, you must be a stranger in this area. And don't you know that the Jewish man, that uh, uh, Nazarene, who they crucified, uh, he said he was supposed to resurrect today, today, is the third day. And they were talking as they go. And they said, no, but the tomb, the tomb was empty, but they did not know whether or not somebody saw the body or not. Because that was one of the rumors. And as they talked to them, evening drew on them. So it started to get twilight darkened. And so when they, they, they got to their place of wedding, and they said to the man, they said, uh, the sun is going down and it's getting dark. You need to come in with us and spend the night. And Jesus went with them. And they sat and they continued to talk. And while they were talking, they said, we need to get something. Put the bread on the table, and go back in those days they didn't use knives to cut the bread, they used to whip their bread. And as the bread was put there, you know how they make, how they, they, they back in those days, they make bread, could be kind of thick, that, 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 that thin, um, 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 you know, they call it pan cake or whatever, but it, it was, you know, we call it dumb bread. And when they break it, break it in, and you get this nice piece, and so the, Jesus decided to break the bread. These men must have been in the presence of Jesus when he fed the 5,000 because they, they recognized him and he break the bread. When he break the bread, it says, their eyes were open 
And he disappeared over there, son. They said, Big Mara, our friend of the grass. Get the clay out of the way, you'll see Jesus. Secondly, you can enter into his presence. You will go into his presence. Let me tell you something. After the clay was taken out of the way, they were able to lower the man down in the presence of Jesus. You see, the clay blocks you from his view. When they moved the clay off the roof, and they let him down, let him down to the lattice, and he got before Jesus. Not only did the man who they let down saw Jesus, see Jesus, but they too were able to see him. I'm sure they were looking down and watching to see what Jesus was going to do. She wanted to do some things 
that if she had done it, I'm sure she would have caused more problem. I said, no, you can't do that. She said, but I have to call you. I'm going to put her there. And I'm finally trying to say, you think you know who you're talking to? You want to get a family chat. You want to get a somebody. You, you, you talk you talk to get her up. No, people are stupid.
You work, you do the work. You pray for him, you get pray for him. You do everything in your power. Bring them to Jesus, that's all. Leave the rest to him. Once you can get them to God, get them to the ready and the gospel preached, that's all God has to do. Jesus snatched this man up his shit and healed him of his illness. Then we uncover the clay of our lives through confession. Then we break up the clay of our lives through humility and repentance. We can and will be our plan to experience forgiveness. The first one says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. First John 1. The same also, if we say we have not sinned, if we have no sin, we make God a liar. And the truth is not in us. Talking to Christians, you know, they didn't say he's going to save you, he said he's going to forgive you. You see, the clay stopped you from experiencing the blessings of God as a child of God. In the face of secret sin, we want you to do in the Lord. God will sing that in our prayer. But you will get a spirit. Whatever it might be. Let's do it. God can forgive you. Maybe you do. You know how to want to do me. Dirty Lord, I think, whatever it is. I don't know. And verse 10 to 12 tells us. That he may know that the Son of Man, this is Jesus speaking, Mark 2, verse 10 to 12. But that he may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive Why he said, Because he's skeptics. And the critics go around him, they have taken the man, thy sins be forgiven thee. They say, No, in God, how can you forgive sin? They can sin and leave Jesus to God. But that ye may know that the Son of Man had power on earth to forgive sin. He said unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, arise and take up thy bed and go thy way into thy house. Listen to this. And immediately, yeah, yeah, I'm going to read some of them. Read that. Yahoo, read that. The doctor said he's being healed. That's the healer. Immediately he arose, shut up the, his, uh, up the bed, and went forth before them all, and as much that they were all amazed. And glorified God, shame, feet, never saw him on this spot before they came to talk to him. They just say, Who was the nation of God? And now, but now they are so gay, so excited. Well, you imagine that they go, They said, Man, you know this man all our lives. This man is now 40 years old, never walked in like all these people. I'll tell you. And Listen, this man, Jesus, oh, he can't tell you. He can do for you what no one else can do. For this man and Jesus, he can do nothing. But this day, he can help us. But when the clay was moved, when the clay was taken away, yes, he walked, he glorified. Let everyone scratch in their head. How in the world did this happen? It can happen. Well, as we close, as we lay, as we lie again and cover the good man, or are we concerned about the being good man? The good man. Have you open and honest spirit to the Lord? You see, he knows your heart. That you tell him things, saying prayers to him, making promises that you know you're not going to keep. See, God knows you're not going to keep. And there's presence, the spirit of power, that you paralyze man with. Be honest. If the clay is in your way, God is able to help you break up the clay. Thank you.
Thank you. 